Hey, it's the Terminian Hero here. And Rayman is playing basketball with his body. Alright, we had enough of that. Anyways. So now that we're back at the gloves. Here we've got all you need to uh, have a good time. Bring the six crystals. Okay. Well, we brought two. Well done, Rayman. Look what you've won. Yay! Anyways, let's go on this portal. Pierrelm... Pierrelms? Yeah, Pierrelms. I don't really remember these mini-games, but let's see. I'm assuming we're trying to collect all the lums as fast as we can here. That's what it looks like. Probably shouldn't have jumped at that one part. Okay. Well done, it's a new record. Okay. Is that the only stage? Is that seriously the only stage? We have a different Globox kid here. What's this? The more uh, ma the more the merrier. Beat the Pure Alums record. Twenty seconds. Yeah, twenty point four six seconds. I'm pretty sure that's what I just got. Okay, first mini game is crap. I guess. I'm pretty sure there's better ones, but not completely sure. Like I said, I don't really remember the mini games all that well. I remember one in some circular thing. That's all I really remember. Anyways. I just entered the portal. I'm going to see Chell. Now, <laughs> anyways. So now we are going to move on to the Menhir Hills. And this level introduces a new mechanic of the game. Or a new creature, rather. Careful. This place is guarded by a walking shell. I've heard that it might be possible to tame it. I told you we'd meet shell here. Oh wait, that's shell. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for the tip. No problem. Oh gosh, here he comes. We could tame it now, but we don't want to do that yet because we got other stuff to do. Yeah, those things explode. So you see we've got these three things here and a gate inside it. And we got a lone one over here. If we go over here we find a switch. If we hit it the gate over here opens. Oh gosh webs. I'm pretty sure this stuff hurts you. No it's just water. Okay. Anyways, is there anywhere else to explore here? I don't believe so. Anyways, so we'll get hurt if we go on those prickly plant vine things there. So we want to tame this guy because you saw he could run over him. And we can ride over it, ride over it while riding him, and we use him to blow up that door. Bravo! You figured out how to ride the shell. Yeah, you can't get off if it's going too fast, so keep that in mind. Yeah. 
Military Academy. Please respect the need for total silence for the cadet's concentration. Um, I'm not going to be silent at all, am I? Oh, they're sleeping. Yeah, for their concentration, my butt. Oh, I accidentally shot the other guy. I was going to see if it was possible to sneak past him. Oh, it looks like you have to defeat those guys to open that door back there. Orange Lum. I don't want to know what they were doing to that Lum. What is this? That looks messed up. What's this pointy thing and this power... Whatever was going on there, it looked wrong. Anyways, moving on. So, we got another one of those walking shells here, but again, we don't want to tame it quite yet. I like how it has a little, like, dog house type house. Okay, move on over here, get a llama, and there's a cage right there. In that building, there's a hole in the building so we can hit it. I'm pretty sure there's a place, like, in the wall we can go somewhere here. I might be thinking of later in the level, I might be thinking of the PlayStation version. Either way, it doesn't look like it's here. You yeah, also try to make sure the shell faces the way you want it to face. You can aim it a little bit before he starts running, but still, do your best to make him face the way you want him to face. Now that the left path had red lums, but the middle path had a yellow lum. Well, the right path, I guess. So you want to go for the yellow lum, of course. This is kind of another one of those on-rails segments, but it's still pretty easy to get everything. As long as you don't miss that one yellow lum. Arr! I be a pirate! That's what he's saying. Anyways... This switch opens that door, which continues through the level, which we don't want to do yet. Elite Troop Training Center. Danger! Arr! Yeah, if we didn't get the shell to hit that door, we could have used the powdered keg here. But we're going to want to use the powdered keg anyways. Because there's something you can do with the powdered keg that I haven't shown yet. You can actually set the powdered keg on fire. See the torch here? See what happens when I have the fire touch the powdered keg? You fly with it! And then you want to jump off so you don't get caught in the explosion. Oh, and right here, you want to throw this powdered keg upwards. That's how you get that cage. Just be careful not to crash midway or you'll fall down that pit. Anyways, <laughs> Clark. So it was you who wiped out all the pirates. Only twenty pirates against you, they didn't stand a chance. Huh? Hello, little buddy. You want to arm wrestle? Hey, you don't look so good. Are you hurt? 
I must have swallowed something bad for me. To get better, I need some life potion. Too bad this isn't Zelda, I could get that for you easy. It's hidden near the entrance of the Marshes of Awakening, in a place called the Cave of Bad Dreams. Don't forget that name, or else the guard won't let you pass. The Cave of Bad Dreams? I won't forget. Hang in there, I'll go to the marshes and get the elixir. Th thanks, little buddy. I'm pretty sure there's no... Were there lumps in that? Never mind, doesn't matter. Basically, we can't continue on until we give Clark the elixir. So we have to go back to the Marshes of Awakening, which is back here, and go to the Cave of Bad Dreams, which is that side path. And like I said, you get here in a different way in the PlayStation version. Basically, you just don't have to go back to the Marshes of Awakening. It just branches off of the Menhir Hills. Ow. Oh. Anyways... I'm not sure where it is, but I know there's another one of those crystals for the Globox Village in this level. I can read your mind. You know the name of this place. You are now ready to enter the Cave of Bad Dreams. But before you come in, I must tell you something. I have hidden a precious treasure inside. You can keep it for yourself if you beat me to it. I'll give you a head start, but don't waste any time. If I catch you, I'll show you no mercy. So yeah, this is the Cave of Bad Dreams. All these weird ghost things and that big bone we were on. We're gonna be jumping across these skulls here. Kinda eerie and creepy and messed up. Look, we're climbing walls of bones. I'm pretty sure that uh, that the reason the main guy here has a hat the same as Polkis's is because I'm pretty sure the Cave of Bad Dreams is um, Polkis's nightmares pretty much while he's asleep there. Cause he creates things in his dreams and you know most of the good things. You know, we, we see the good things, but the bad things, I guess, end up in the Cave of Bad Dreams, I think. So, yeah. And this is further supported by... When I said the guy in Rayman Origins, the Bubble Dreamer, I'm pretty sure is supposed to be Polakis, and he mentions how he had to be awakened from a nightmare by Rayman. So yeah, that further supports my point, my theory, my game theory. Anyways, we're about out of time, so I'll see you next time when we go through the Cave of Bad Dreams and get the elixir. See you then.